So some of the things in taking a look at your site um, that are important things to kind of understand are that your site is bounded by two streets, one of which flows in this direction and the other flows in that direction. So these are one-way streets. That's something very unusual that maybe you don't usually encounter in your day-to-day -day travels. Okay, so there are one-way streets on either side of your project site. Your project site has a parking area out here. Okay, and so there are parking spaces all out here for people that are going to take their bus and leave their car here. Right? There's also a drop-off zone here. Notice how that dents in like that and then it comes back out. That's for cars that can pull in and pull to the curb, drop off their passengers, and then leave once again. Okay. Now, um, this stripe here, this stripe here is a sidewalk. All right. These little things that look like little V's, see the V's on the side right there? What do you guys think those are? These are driveways. That's right. So if you turn the corner and you turn too sharp, what happens if I try to turn in right here? Ka-thunk! And then next thing you know, you got a flat tire and not happy, right? Okay. So, um... Let me ask a question. Can I come up this way and turn in here? No? What happens? A one-way street. That's right. So you can't do that. Okay. All right. Now, there's also, in addition to the sidewalks that are on either side of your site along the streets, there's also a sidewalk running across the front part of your site. Okay? All right, now, there's a dashed line in here. Do you guys see that dashed line? That dashed line is what is known as a setback line. Okay? So, setback lines are the area within which you can build buildings. You can have a garden wall that comes out past the edge of the setback line, but the actual building parts have to stay inside of that line. Okay? Say that again. You can build what? Um, like a garden wall. Sorry. Right? So at your house, do you have a backyard? At my mom's house, yeah. Your mom's house. Is there is there a wall in the backyard? Yeah. There is, right? That wall is inside of the setback. Oh, okay. Right? Your mom's house doesn't probably go back to that wall. Right? But you're allowed to build walls in the setback areas, but you're not allowed to build building areas in the setback areas. Okay? okay? All right. So, um, this area that's back in here, leading from that driveway and that driveway in, right? you'll notice that there is this double line right here. That's a wall. That is a six foot high block wall. Okay? You guys know what a concrete block wall looks like? Yeah? Okay. So that's what that is. Notice that it doesn't come out past the side yard setbacks. It's kind of in line with them, right? It's not out here. It doesn't come all the way to the sidewalk. Okay. You're going to be responsible for creating the other side of that fence and putting in the large automatic double doors that are on either side. Okay? So your buses, you're going to have to make a decision on your buses whether the buses enter here and exit here or whether the buses enter from this side and exit out that way. The area where the buses drive through is one way. So you, your decision is, do the buses go that way or do the buses go this way? Okay? Once you make that decision, it will have an impact on where you can park the buses. 
Okay. Anybody ever seen um, <coughs> Fast and the Furious? The movies? No? None of you? No. Yeah. Well, see, the cars in the Fast and the Furious and like the later ones, they do something called drifting, right? Where the car's coming around the corner and the it's, it's turning and the tail end's sliding out and they're coming around the corner. It's total bullshit, but um, at any rate, I just, one thing I want you guys to be aware of is buses don't drift, right? They'll tip over if they try to drift them, right? And so you can't take a bus and make it drift around the corner and pull in right there. Not going to happen. Buses have these big, wide turning radiuses. And there's no way that if you're entering from this side, it's going to be able to park there. It's going to have to park at the other end of the lot from where you enter. Is that clear? So you've got to basically start with, all right, which direction am I coming in from? And then your buses will be at the opposite end. One other thing. It is much harder for a bus to pull, to pull a complete U-turn. So what you might try is making the bus come in and then pull in at an angle. Okay? Now, if it pulls in at an angle, right, when it backs out, it's going to do this, right? Which is another reason why you don't want to have it backing out here, knocking down both fences and backing out into traffic. So you're going to park at the opposite end. All right. If you read your, your problem, your project prompt, um, you have four buses that you have to park. And the buses are 40 feet long, 8 feet wide, and 13 feet high. Huh? How close can they be? They have to be, there's a distance that's talked about in the project prompt that they have to be a certain distance apart. So if I was to draw that for you, if this is my 40 foot by 8 foot bus, right, and I, I have a certain distance that my next one has to be from it. And then there is an area in between it that is striped as the loading and unloading zone for the bus. And there's one of those between each bus. Okay. All right. Any questions about what we've covered so far? No? All right. So the direction that your bus has entered from, right, is probably when you look through this project prompt, it's not going to jump out at you as like the starting point. But I'm telling you, that is the starting point. And the decisions that you make after that are all going to be predicated on one simple thing. Which direction did the bus enter from? So it's like, you ever seen dominoes falling over that have been stacked up? It's like a cascading effect. One thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, right? Well, let me explain that to you. If you decide that your bus, your buses are going to enter from this side, that means that you have to park them on this side. They park on the opposite side that they enter from, right? And they park as far over this way as you can get them. Well, what that means is that you're going to use up a big chunk of your area on this side, which means that your building space is now confined to this L shape here. So what direction they entered from had an impact on where your buildable area is. Okay? So how many minutes, Matt? Nine. Nine? Nine? All right. So this gives you kind of just a quick sort of primer to your site. Okay? One other thing that I want you to be aware of. The site, I have, uh, this year, or this term, I have relocated it out to the low desert. So it's out in the Coachella Valley, okay? Near, basically Palm Springs. Um, it's hotter than hell out there. 
Okay? So you guys are supposed to be aware of solar geometry. You, in the, the first project, you dealt with it explicitly. In the second project, eh, it wasn't really covered that much. But what, where does the sun rise? Which direction? It rises in the east, and it sets where? In the west. So east is that way. West is that way. Okay? Now, what I want you guys to be aware of is that, using this rule, in the summertime, the sun's going to rise to the north of east. It's going to travel very high through the sky, not, not straight up and down, but almost straight up and down. And then it's going to set to the north of west. Only on the equinox, on the two equinoxes, does it rise straight east, travel through the southern hemisphere, and then set exactly west. In the wintertime, it rises to the south of east, goes very low on the, on, on the sky, and it sets to the south of east. Okay? So part of what you need to understand is that it's hot out in Palm Springs. Okay? I took the design course students out there on Sunday. And the outside air temperature when they got there was 108 or 107. What was it? 108, 107? Yeah. And when you're standing in the sun, it's pretty brutal, isn't it? So you need shade. Okay? Which means that your buses, you're going to be creating a canopy that go over your buses, which is why I had to make these forms. Right? These forms are canopies that you can pull buses underneath. And then you're going to have a separate terminal building that attaches to the canopy. Okay. How big is the canopy? You won't find it in there. You know why? Well, because we make it up. Nope. Cool. <laughs> what does the canopy have to cover? Your buses. And your buses are parking in a certain area, right? And the buses are a certain distance apart. And there's, a, there's an unloading zone in between them all. So these machines, these gigantic machines, are what's going to drive some of the decisions that you make on your site. But the buses need to be covered from the sun. So you have to be aware of where is the sun at different times of the year. Okay? All right. Go ahead and stop the video.